how's it going? So we're here in the Blue Mountain Range of Northeast Oregon. I don't know, right now we're probably about 5,000-ish elevation or so. We're at the top. Well, it's not the top top. It's the top of the current hill we were going over. <laughs> um, and we're just up here, you know, seeing who's out. Yarrow's in full force and, and gathering a little bit of pitch. And I thought I'd take a moment to talk to you about um, pine pitch, although there's pine pitch, spruce pitch, basically any pitch that's coming off of a conifer tree is the same properties of what I'm going to talk about today coming off of this lady. Um, okay, so this right here is pitch, and this is really good stuff, get out of my face fly, um, because it's still nice and soft. I'll have him get close and show you. Um, this is the stuff that I really like. I like when it's still pretty pliable and it hasn't like turned into amber basically. So that's what amber is, is like prehistoric pitch and it gets really hard, but it starts out just like this. Oh look, here's some real fresh stuff right here. And it almost looks like a fleshy color. And you can even see down in here, if he goes up into there, you can see the, the fresh little droplets in there. Um, but yeah, so this is what we're after. And now where we live at and a lot of places in the country, there are these pine beetles and they're killing off trees in the millions. Um, they're damaging them anyhow. And one of the things that they do is they burrow in. And when they burrow in, you can almost see right here, check it out. See these holes? See these holes? That's because these pine beetles have made um, a home in there and they're, they're hurting the tree. And so the tree pushes up the pitch, but the pine beetle wants that to happen because then it lays its eggs in there and it keeps it kind of safe. So when you find an infested tree, it's really, it's sad because it's infested, but it's also great because the more pine pitch you take off of the tree, um, it kills the beetle's habitat, right? Like it can't live there anymore and you kill off babies by proxy and that means you save a few trees. Um, but if you have a tree that isn't infested with pine pitch, you can just remove half of it. There's a truck going by and we're really remote so we have to be mindful of that. Um, but hopefully they just pass on by. Um, when you're when you're like deep in the woods, people are, and I know this is a side trail, but people are only here for two reasons for the most part. They're out here because they're like us, they're like you, they love nature, they just want to be out here. Or they think they've come out far enough to get away with some shit. <laughs> and so you just have to be a little bit mindful that they seem to be going the other way. Um, so if you're going to be gathering pine pitch, I really suggest there's a bug in the back of my shirt. Hold on, got it. <laughs> got it out. I wore the wrong color dress today. I really suggest bringing a disposable glove or a glove of some sort. And if not, you're going to want to have some olive oil with you because you're not going to be able to wash the pitch off with soap and water. Um, and so if you have olive oil, it dissolves the fats in it, dissolves the, um, the stickiness of the pitch, and you can get it off your hands. Um, so let's say this piece right here. Because if a tree is weaving pitch, it's injured for some reason. And you don't want to take off its entire, let's just call it a scab for lack of a better word. So what you can do, and this is my handy pitch tool, it's a broken root digger. And whatever you decide to gather pitch with, that is the thing you will forever gather pitch with. Should have put my other glove on. What I'm just gonna do is just take off half of it I'm gonna pop that on my bag right quick. And then if it's really soft stuff, sometimes I'm gonna take this soft stuff and I'm gonna cover it back up. So I've basically just, um, it's gonna stop it from bleeding out more. But since I know that there's a fucking beetle hiding behind that, because you know, you can see the holes in that one, I'm gonna do her a solid and I'm gonna take all the pitch that way the beetle, and there's a little hole right there, doesn't have a home anymore and stops destroying that one particular part of the tree. Now, you're thinking, why do I want to gather this pitch? Pitch is amazing. So she's using it to heal her wounds, but that means you can use it to heal your wounds. It's antibacterial, it's antimicrobial, it's antifungal. It's even a touch antiviral if you make a tincture with it, mm, but pitch is hyperphobic, so I won't go into the complexity and how hard it is to make a pitch tincture. You can, however, 
um, make a pitch glycerite, which isn't the same as a tincture, but you can just dump glycerin over pitch and it'll slowly dissolve it because it's a fat, um, it's a fatty alcohol. Um, but I like to take her and I take this pitch straight off the tree and I put it into oil and I apply heat for a good long while and there's a rabbit right behind you <laughs> and I uh, or no it's a ground chuck pup and it's head up over there sorry it distracted me and I let that infuse into the oil and then you can take that oil and you can make balms and salves and lotions and all kinds of things so it's amazing for anything you've got going on like if that bee would have just stung me or if you've got acne or psoriasis or a nasty wound you can turn this infused pitch oil um, um, into a really healing um, herbal infused oil or balm or whatever you want to make out of her. Um, and so yeah, I really like this soft kind. Um, if you have, if you come across some of the harder stuff like this down here, I'll have him get closer. You can still gather this. You should just expect that your oil is going to take a lot longer to um, to infuse that and you need to smash it up good. Now a lot of people ask me you know, they're out gathering pitch and I'm just gonna pop that in my bag and they're like, how do I clean my pitch? Nature isn't dirty, your body isn't dirty. You don't need to try to sterilize something that, um, something biting the back of my neck, <laughs> that by design <laughs> is um, already clean. She's made this clean for the sake of keeping um, herself from getting infected. And you're like, oh, but there's little pieces of bark in there. And I'm like, yeah, and they have the same properties as the pitch because the tree made it. <laughs> so basically, I just gather all of this pitch and I do use plastic ga bags to gather because here's a trick. Once you fill, fill this up, it's gonna be really hard to get it out until you pop it in your fridge or your freezer for a few days. And then when it's nice and cold, the bag will just peel off of all that sticky pitch and you can use it however you need it. And then we can reuse these bags again and again. Um, I do have something that I call a pitch pot, <laughs> which is just like this big, I don't know, like a cookie jar type thing that I keep pitch in. Again, whatever you decide to keep pitch in will never be the same again. And I actually, once I started needing more pitch and going out further and gathering more, I really like to store it in the freezer because it's easy to pop off. It's not as sticky to deal with. Um, so let me show you an example of sticky pitch. Now I really like the soft stuff because she dissolves into oil really easy. But look at how, look at how soft that pitch is and it's so freaking sticky if you stick that in a jar you're only going to get a portion of it out because it's going to stick and eventually harden but if you stick it in a bag and then pop it in the freezer it's 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 no longer you know as sticky it freezes basically so when is the time of year to be gathering pitch well if you have infested trees and it's pretty easy to google to see if you've got yourself these gloves are hot when i have them on um, it's pretty easy to Google and see if you have a pine beetle infestation in your area. They hit ponderosa really hard and you'll usually be able to tell because the tree is just like dripping in pitch. See like right up here there's like literally like a little, what do they call those, stalactites, stalagmites, whichever one, um, a pitch hanging down because this tree is trying so hard to get this beetle out of her. And I can see all the little caves that they're in. Um, you know, the little holes they make. So if you have an infestation, you can gather this pitch year round and you're doing the tree a favor because you're killing off all the beetles and things like that. You're basically getting out and taking away the home of what's killing it. But if that's not the case and you just come across like a nice little thing of pitch on a tree and it's not covered in it and you don't think she's infected, um, you don't really want to be gathering pitch much later than the end of August, beginning of September, because they need time to re place what you've taken um, and you also I usually try to like like we're gonna gather off of this tree and if she wasn't infested we wouldn't gather off of her for a few more years giving her time to heal her wounds um, but then you only want to make sure you take half of an amount of pitch that's coming out if it's not infected um, that way you can smear the other half over or even if you can't quite smear it only take half that way the tree has less of a wound to heal and it's not that you're creating the wound, you're just taking off this amazing substance that she creates to heal herself. Um, some people call it sap. 
Um, sap and pitch are two different things. Pitch is what comes out of here. Um, sap is what you tap a maple tree for to try to make like maple syrup. It's like more of the inside and she can drip that sometime but generally she's not pushing out sap. She's pushing out pitch. So that sounds like a dirt bike or something. But if you like my videos, if you like learning about pitch and all these things I talk about, you like my rambles and my rants, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, turn on notifications. If you're watching on YouTube, come find me on Instagram. If you're watching on Instagram, come find me on YouTube. I've got a ton of stuff of all different kinds on both places. Um, and liking and sharing and commenting, helps other people find this and that's important because they just like you need to know that you are smart enough to get out here and find pine pitch and find these plant allies and take your healing into your own hand and find what nature has always had to offer you we've just forgotten and remember everything you learned here today everything you learn out of curiosity everything is valid and you don't need to pay somebody thousands of dollars to retain this knowledge okay so so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!